And today we're going to be looking at this story. He made a pact with the devil. And then he told a spiritual daughter of Padre Pio. So what do you think would have happened in this situation? Welcome, dear friends of Following Padre Pio. I am Edward Urban, and on our channel we look at the incredible life of Saint Padre Pio, the mystic and miracle worker, whose intercession is still so powerful today. So if you, or a loved one, or someone you know is in need of Padre Pio's help and intercession, then do follow our channel, and we hope that you will be amazed to find out what Padre Pio can do for you. And if you are new to our channel, then please do subscribe to our channel. And once you've subscribed, you must click that reminder bell in order to receive reminders from YouTube of future videos. And if you admire Padre Pio, if you think of him as a great saint, someone who helps people, then please help in our apostolate. Join us in our apostolate. And right now, you can share this video, which you'll see the link below, with your friends and colleagues. Of course, do like the video, click the thumbs up, because that also helps our ratings with YouTube. Now, certain stories about Padre Pio, they can really border on what one might think, expect in a soap opera or, opera or in a crime novel. As someone put it, some of these stories, they challenge common sense, yet at the same time, they appeal to our need to believe in the existence of another world, of something higher, of a spiritual world and God. So here we have a story in which the main, the lead actor, the lead character is the biographer Katarina Tangari. Now, there was a lawyer who was a three, free thinker, i.e. on all matters religious, he followed his own opinion. And he rented out certain huts to holiday holidaymakers in the mountains of the beautiful province of Avellino, that is in Campan Campania, Italy. So this lawyer had a villa there, and it was set in a garden that was so beautiful, just so picturesque, that one had the impression that God himself had actually drawn the garden with his own hands. You can imagine how beautiful that is. And yet... Contrary to this beautiful impression, on the entrance gate to the property, he had a cer ceramic slab in which was written, in this house, there is no talk of religion. So what's going on here? Well, on this particular day, the lawyer politely greeted a new group of guests who were interested in renting a hut. And naturally, he did not know that these people, in fact, they came from San Giovanni Rotundo and they were strong supporters and followers of Padre Pio. Now, Katarina pretended that she had not seen the sign at the entrance and tried to direct the conversation in, in a religious direction, just to see what was going to happen. And because she always loved flowers, she decided to begin with that, talking about the flowers. Well, the lawyer was very pleased as they had something in common and he really opened his heart to her. I am old, he said. I no longer have long to live. These flowers are my only happiness. When I think that I must separate from them, it makes me a little desperate, he added, very movingly. And then he said jokingly, therefore, he had made a pact. He said, I've made a pact with the devil. And since I've tried to serve him as best as possible, I hope that after my death, he will allow me to visit the garden very often. So that was his pact with the devil. And you think you want to go to hell? She responded. Yes, the lawyer said. You know, I've always gotten along rather well with the devil. <laughs> okay. This revelation was completely shocking to Katerina, but... She did not let her sh surprise, her shock show. And then she said, I think you actually get along better with the flowers than with the devil. Well, the old free thinker was very moved by this. Perhaps it was her sincerity or her desire to really help him pass something. And inwardly she thought, if one believes in the devil and in hell and in a life after the grave, then this person can in fact not be too far from believing in God. 
in heaven and the immortal soul. And she came to the conclusion, this man thinks this like this, this way, because he has not met Christ. And therein lies the whole cause of his problem. She came to this conclusion. And then her thoughts flew to Padre Pio. And she, 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 she was thinking, he always knows what to do with such cases. But how could she get the old lawyer to go to San Giovanni Rotondo to see Padre Pio? So there's a problem right here. And within herself, she prayed for a sign. And she, she made up her mind that if the lawyer gave her a flower, then she would go to San Giovanni Rotondo to present the situation, this whole case, to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and also to Padre Pio asking for his prayers and intercessions for this particular man. Well, to everyone's amazement and joy, the lawyer, who did not normally give away his flowers, he was very attached to his flowers, um, he offered her a whole bouquet of roses as they said their goodbyes. And for Katerina, this meant one thing. She had to go straight to Padre Pio and she did just that. She kept her side of the deal. And she told him, Padre Pio, what had happened and pleaded with Padre Pio that this would be a special intention in his Mass the following day. Well, of course, Padre Pio promised to do this. And then Padre Pio did something else. He blessed a small image, a small card of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and also a little rosary. And he gave it to her. And she was sent with, this, with these gifts to the lawyer and had to advise him to go to confession and to receive Holy Communion this coming Easter. Well, Kat Katerina was now a little bit worried. She had some apprehension. Wouldn't it be too much to ask this of the lawyer all at once? However, she overcame these doubts. Despite the doubts, she went and gave these things to the lawyer. And then, a week later, she received a response which made her incredibly happy. It was this, from the lawyer. He said, Dear kind-hearted Mrs. Tangari, I remember our conversation and that I gave you flowers. But I could not imagine that you would then send me such a kind and encouraging letter that led me to receive the Holy Sacraments at Easter. Wow, so something big had happened. And he continued, he said, such encouragement from my family members has never been lacking. They always wanted to see his conversion and the good of his soul. But he never responded to that. And he said, although in my heart I always longed for a life of belief, of faith, I must confess, he said, it is only your letter that led me to this decision. It was something in this, in this letter that had changed how things were. Thank you very much for this gift and for the beautiful rosary. When I pray it, I promise to remember you. So what had made such a difference this particular time? We see that his family had often asked him to make right to convert. What was the difference? And I'm going to propose that it was the prayers of Padre Pio. They made all the difference. Make sure that if you have not subscribed, then you do subscribe. And please do share this video, our videos, with your friends and colleagues and others that you know. You'll be helping in our Padre Pio apostolate if you do that. Please continue watching. Here we have our most popular videos, a video selected specially for you. And also, if you have not enrolled, then do enroll for next Friday's Mass Pray Intentions to Padre Pio. Christ, oh.